Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast. Once again, from ClickWorld here in Las Vegas, live setting, bit in the background, what you can see, what is happening. I'm joined by Dan Potter, who's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Click. Uh, Dan, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. And, and to be a guru on a guru podcast. <laughs> this, this is great. Yeah. I'm honored. Yeah, I think you're one of the guys as well uh, who can tell us a lot about the data integration. Uh, as, as I understood, this is the part where you're responsible for Absolutely. At Click. Yeah, yeah. I've been in and around the data space for a long time. I, I came to Click as part of the Attunity acquisition. Okay. Um, and, you know, we've been doing data integration and helping our customers move data. Uh, shape that data, make it analytics ready, and and it, it was a perfect marriage with Click, yeah. because the challenge that that organizations have is how to unlock that data and get the most value from the data. And Click Sense as an analytics tool is a wonderful tool, but it's only as good as the data that you're making available to it. And that's why it's again, it's been a great marriage. Yeah. So really, getting to the data, Click Sense. Is, is magnificent on yes. visualizing it, um, on creating the applications. So. Absolutely, and and some of the innovations there around AutoML and others, it's just, it's fascinating uh, how far it's come in such a short amount of time. Yeah, and I heard, a, well, if talent goes through, then yep. it's it's 11th acquisition what they did. You say you came from Attunity. Yep. I'm familiar with what Attunity did in the past. Yep. And they, I was kind of surprised by the speed that the Click was able to integrate a new company. Yes. So how did that go? Uh, the integration from Attunity into Click. Yeah, it, it, well, it's been a very smooth one. Uh, first, what I liked about it was was Click allowed us to maintain that independent and agnostic perspective that we take to the market. You know, we feed data into Click, but not only Click. Our customers have a mix of everything. Yeah, yeah. They do analytics, they do operational uses of the data. So we maintain that laser focus on helping our customers move and shape the data regardless of how they're going to consume it. And that helped us continue to, to grow in the data integration space. It also helps our customers because they know they've got the freedom and agility to do whatever they need to do whenever they need it. Yeah, and sometimes you see with these acquisitions, you get still kind of siloed products yes. that are not really integrated. Yeah. It feels like it's still a different product. Well, that that's where Click Cloud is really transformed you know, the, the, us as a company, having a common uh, uh, platform as a service and taking the foundational capabilities that are common across data and analytics. So things like catalog uh, live there. Yeah. And uh, catalog really is that nexus between the data engineering team that's responsible for delivering the data and, and the analytics team that is trying to get value from the data. And the only way that that happens is if they can find the data if they can trust the data, yes. where did it come from? How was it modified? By whom? When? You know, that's that's you need that that catalog and you need that uh, lineage and governance to form the trust. So, in fact, the cloud for Click in itself, yes, uh, was kind of enabler to do all the integrations with the acquired products. Yeah, a absolutely. The cloud is is accelerating our ability to deliver value oh, to yeah. customers, and it's going to help tremendously with talent with the talent acquisition. You know, we'll be able to uh, deliver value. Like we showed today on the main stage, we showed a demonstration where uh, we have a loosely coupled approach today to all of the capabilities of Talent and Click for integration. So we can bring Talent connectors to 130 different SaaS systems, and we can bring those into a pipeline with Click and Click Cloud. Yes. And then we can do the transformation that we do at Click so well. We can augment that with the quality stuff that Talent does. We can generate APIs on top of that data from Talent. So the nice thing uh, is that the cloud gives us uh, a, a platform in which to do this, but also the approach that, that we've taken at Click and that Talent has taken, being independent, agnostic uh, to different technologies and platforms, enables us to have a, a loosely coupled approach to integration where we can deliver value on day one. It sounds like a Zapier type of approach where you say, I can connect each kind of system to each other and I do it wherever in the pipeline that, yep. I, that I think is correct and build, uh, in fact, an architecture as you like it or as it matches with the current architecture of a customer. Yeah, and you brought up a good example because that's the, the whole notion of, of orchestrating in a no-code way. That's really where, it, where integration is moving to. Uh, and that's, I think, the power of, of what we can bring. We do it on a smaller scale in an app, application to application, yes. but now as we are doing uh, automation of connecting to sources, moving that data, transforming that data, 
doing quality against that data. I think the more that we can automate that in a Zapier-like way, yeah. that, that's really what people need to get to, to, to connect to the wide variety of sources they have. Yeah, so. and, and what, do you, what do you see most customers are still facing as, as data challenges, data problems, or is it more business problems uh, what they are facing? It's both. So the, we'll start on the business side. On the business side, uh, the, the list of requirements is always growing, right? And, and yeah, that's, that's good because businesses are becoming more data driven. Mm -hmm. They want access to more data. They want that data fast. They want the insights fast. They want to be able to take action. In order to service those, those challenging business requirements, you need to, to go on the technology side and say, okay, how can I unlock this in a very efficient way? That's where you have to have automation. Yes. Uh, to meet the business requirement for real-time fresh data, it needs to be real-time integration. Um, and you know, one of the technical challenges that you see, if you, if you think about how uh, data and applications are the source of information for analytics, look at, at the proliferation of SaaS applications. Uh, ID says, says there's over 30,000 SaaS uh, companies out there today. Yeah, 30,000 different applications potentially that you need to connect to. There's over 400 databases that you need to connect to. So as an integration company, this is where the connector factory strategy yeah. is going to play a really important role. If you're going to do any kind of analytics, you need to connect to the data first. So we, we've embarked on a bold strategy to be able to connect to the widest variety of different data and application sets. Uh, and that's what Connector Factory is, is all about. Accelerating that delivery and be able to say yes to any customer requirement for data. But I think it's not only connecting the data. If I understood how the uh, the, the connection factory uh, is set up is as well, uh, you build a co uh, an integration and you make it available kind of uh, in an API way in uh, whatever type of uh, consumption pattern that you want it to, to be. Yeah, so the connector factory is really the first step of an integration. I need to connect to a, to a source. Connecting to that source more and more, it's connecting to an API. So yes. we've built a really efficient way in which we can take any API and be able to capture that data, bring it into the platform, and then once it's in the platform, you can do all the great integration, transformation, uh, all of the analytics, but you gotta have, you gotta start with the connectivity. If you don't have connectivity, you can't do any of the other great things with that data. So, so yeah, for companies to become data-driven with the big word, I call it all, the, I can't, can't uh, do anything about it. I call it the big word, what, what companies are shouting all the time. So the first step where they should look at if they make a choice for a platform would be, how well does it integrate with other systems or yes. the integration capabilities? Yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely, you need to be able to say yes to the core sources they have. Uh, so connectivity is the first step. Automation, I think, is a really important step because you will never keep up doing a hand-coded approach, the old way of integrating, you will never keep up. And when you do that hand-coding, you incur technical debt, you also lose all your agility. You know, today, the business people may be saying, hey, I need to create a data mart in this shape from these sources and on this platform. Tomorrow they may wake up and say, oh, I need these additional sources. We're moving clouds. We're changing the technology by which we want to consume it. My data science team wants to do this. You need the agility to be able to point at, at your next target and shape it and automate that whole process of generating the code to do that. So that that's really the future for us. Yeah, and well, with the, 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 the hop word for the time being, chat GPT, Ali, that's the part of the automation where I've been playing around with it and yes. say, just write me this SQL to group it. Yeah. Uh, how do I pi uh, write a Python script? And it comes out Isn't and it that helps you. It's fascinating. Yeah. So is that something where, where you're looking into integrating that part of, of competence? Yeah, exactly. You hit on the, the right thing. I think it's helping to augment the development effort. You know, So sometimes it, it may be just as simple as, hey, we, we do our own custom SQL. We want to do some transforms. Here's what I've written. Optimize it yes. or debug it or take this pattern as, as these, this is the way in which we bind to a certain style, oh, yeah. replicate that. So every time I submit my, my new SQL code, have it conform to the way in which the, we've done it before. So those kinds of, of, of accelerators and augmenting the, the development process, I think is gonna be kind of the first step. But I think we've just scratched the surface of what, you know, 
generative yeah. AI can do with data integration. Yeah, I share the same feeling on that. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're opening up really the insights of data, what we really can tap. Yeah, and, absolutely. And avoiding avoiding the, the cumbersome labor intensive work what we've been doing. Yep. The eighty percent of data preparation what you what we're facing in, in all aspects. Is it AI, is it data science, is it data warehouse? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think it's going to be fascinating. I think the way in which the language models evolve, yes. I think you're going. I think you're going to get really uh, enterprise-specific uh, LLMs, yes, I think so. so that you can, you know, freely put whatever proprietary data that you want, train those models, hone them really, really well, and then you, you know, you remove all of the concerns and barriers uh, yeah. of uh, of AI. Yeah, yeah. I so. mean, we're all getting excited for that. So oh, it is. Oh, it's it's really fun to play with. So. Yeah, and it's it's at the speed that it's developing. It's it's amazing. So yeah. I'm very hopeful that in the next one to two years we will see that uh, being integrated in, in the I, platform. I agree. And again, think about it's it's integration, right? You know, open AI is just an AI, uh, an API. That yes. makes it really easy for organizations like ours and others to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah. That's the, the beauty. And, and you know, having open, open APIs to these different systems and these different services and being able to loosely couple those together and orchestrate value, yeah. that's, it's an integration job at the end of the day. So. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, last uh, question as a wrap up. Yeah. Uh, data connects us, but music connects us as well. Yeah. Do you have a favorite type of music or a favorite band? <laughs> Great question. I think my favorite band goes back, it's Little Feet. You know Little Feet? Little Lowell Feet. George was, uh, was uh, oh, he, he passed away very young, but they had a really interesting kind of boogie woogie rock fusion. And for whatever reason, that one just. Uh, did it for me. Okay, but yeah. you still stick with that? I still love it. I'm, I'm, I play guitar, so I like a variety of different music, and I love the blues. Yeah. Um, but yeah, little feet for me. That's, that's my answer, and I'm sticking with it. Okay. Great. So when you go to Spotify tonight, you go look up Little Feet, and you can look up Dixie Chicken, and you, you you'll enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Then, yeah. Uh, nice talking to you. Very Thanks nice talking time. to you. Thank you very much. Thank Enjoyed you. it. Yeah.